Welcome back, it's Jerry here with the Happy Hootie. I've got an interesting swap today. My daughter has need for a couple of plugs next to her makeup stand, but she also wants to be able to plug in her other items like her cell phone and iPad. And the problem is, unless you're gonna get an extension cord to plug into this using these USB adapters, uh, it sure would be nice if you could just plug some USBs directly into that as well. Obviously that's not compatible, but with a simple swap, we can actually change this out to a smarter plug like this one here. This is a 15 amp plug that has two additional USB ports along with the capability to do your standard plugs as well. And so what we're gonna do today is remove this one and be swapping it with this one and showing you how easy that can be done. Only tools you're gonna to need for this simple swap are going to be a flathead screwdriver, a Phillips head screwdriver, and possibly a thin flathead screwdriver to release the back of this. I have not taken it apart yet to see how it's connected, but sometimes they use quick release. Uh, they may require to use some smaller piece as well. And then it's also a good idea to have a set of wire strippers or wire cutters. This would be able to cut and strip the wires. If you have an actual wire stripper uh, that's made for electrical wires, that's obviously preferred. But if you don't, if you have a pair of pliers that has a sharp edge on it to cut the wires, I can show you how to strip the wires using that as well. So let's get started. But before we do, I want to make sure we're safe. So obviously, if you don't know how to mess with electrical equipment, don't call an electrician and be safe. Uh, certainly, it's always advised that you go locate your breaker for this particular room and shut that off before we get started. So that's what we're going to do next. Locate your breaker panel. Typically in a garage or a basement, it will always be between three and five feet from the meter on the outside of your house. So if you're unsure of where your breaker box is, locate the meter on the outside and then look a few feet on the inside and it will be there. You need to locate the breaker for the particular room, in this case down here, and turn it off. Now that the power is off, we're gonna use our flathead screwdriver and remove the center screw. That's just what holds the plate on. And that will reveal the electrical outlet that's behind. Most of these will also have a flathead screw that's holding these in on top and the bottom, so we're gonna remove those as well. That will allow the electrical outlet to come out from the wall. Once that's loose from the wall, we're gonna go ahead and grab it and pull it out so that it exposes the wires back behind. In this particular case, because it is one that's run in series, meaning there is something to the front and behind this one, this is not an end circuit, we've got two wires coming in, two wires going out, and you have a ground wire that's attached to the ground. We're going to go ahead and disconnect all those wires before installing the new plug. The back of the new one also will have white, it says here, an area for your white plugs, white wires to go, and one that's hot, which is where the black wires are going to go on the back side of this as well, as well as the green ground screw there. So if for some reason you don't understand, there's white is the white, hot is the black, and they will go into those as well to complete the series moving forward. Sometimes you can use a small screwdriver to stick it in and release these wires like that. Other times if you can't, you can use these wire cutters and just go ahead and cut the wires and then I'll show you how to strip those here in a minute. Another great tip is if you're working with electrical wires, of course, making sure that it's off, make sure to spread them out far away from each other as well. One, so that they don't come in contact with one another in case there should happen to be power, which there shouldn't be, but also it keeps it from pulling back into the wall. In this particular case, it's not going to do that, but if you're working on an upper floor, sometimes if the wires are fed up and through, a, through the back end of this, sometimes it has a tendency to gravity to, to want to pull them back down through there, and you don't want to lose the wires back down in the wall. Uh, to go ahead and get this one that I cut stripped, you can either use a wire stripper or you can use your little wire cutters here and just kind of go down a little bit just putting light pressure on it just kind of work your way back and forth and then just go ahead and push out on it like that and that will strip off that end piece of plastic off the end a little sheathing and it'll expose the new the new piece there on the back side of this again we've got a hot side and a neutral side 
and a ground. I'm gonna go ahead and loosen up the ground and put it on first. So we're just gonna loosen that up on the bottom there. And using our ground wire, we're gonna attach it similar like we did, like the one that came off of there before, and just tighten it down. And secure that into place. And then on the back side of this, again, I've got my hot, hot lines here. That's these, the darker colored lines, the black lines. We're gonna feed, feed those in underneath that edge there. And I'm gonna feed the other one in. And then we're gonna go ahead and crank that one down. And then we'll do the same thing with the white lines. Once our electrical outlet is in place, we're just simply going to push the lines back into the wall and line up the screws to put those into the wall. We're going to go ahead and put those screws back into the wall. It's a good idea to go back and forth and work a little bit on the top screw and a little bit on the bottom screw and kind of work itself back into the wall so you don't get it stuck in there cockeyed or end up pinching a wire. Just makes it a little easier. Now, we'll also notice before I get this brought down too far, there is some play where it'll allow this to slide a little bit side to side. You want to go ahead and get it centered as good as you can, depending on where your socket is, depending on where your hole is, so that this plate will cover up any gaps. And so before we put that on there, we'll kind of test fit this to see now that's going to pin down on there like that which then looks like it covers up all the outside edges which is good and that's on there pretty secure and we'll get those tightened up on there and that will provide a nice clean look to that this will allow her to then go ahead and use these USB cords and plug those in as well as using regular plugs in the socket. We're going to locate that breaker again and turn it back on. I do hope you found this helpful. If you did, please feel free to go down and hit that like and subscribe and we'll bring you great DIY projects that can help you and your family in the future real soon. Thanks for watching.